here are some wonderful examples of Goyle pots that students have made in the past. Notice that they are all different sizes, they are all different shapes. Most are round, um, some are taller than others, and some students decided to smooth out the surface of the outside of their coil pot when finishing. You'll also see that some have embellished the coil pots with different types of coils and shapes to make them look a little more exciting and interesting to their viewers. For the coil pot project, you will need the following supplies. Your clay, a washcloth or rag, a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can fill a metal water bottle with water to weight it and use that instead. You will also need a bowl or a cup of water, a small bowl or a cup to mix slip, and a small plate or small bowl to help trace the base of the piece. I suggest using newspaper on your surface so that the clay doesn't stick, and a fork to create texture. Always remember that when you're working with clay that you need to work it in your hands to warm it up by wedging it in your hands, creating spheres. You can also work your clay on a table surface to work out all of those air bubbles. If you notice your clay drying out, make sure that you are adding some water to the surface so that it doesn't crack. All right, after you've warmed up your clay and it's free of air bubbles and cracks, you're going to take your rolling pin or your water bottle and you're gonna roll it out into a slab such as I have done here. And take note that my base is no thicker than about a fourth of an inch. You can make them about a half an inch thick, but try not to make it too thick because it takes longer for thicker pieces of clay to dry. All right, next you're gonna take your bowl or your plate and you're going to use that as a stencil for the base of your coil pot. Take a pencil and trace along the edge of that clay. All right, now we have a nice base to our coil pot. Another way that you can create a base is by using a coil to create that. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna show you how to make a coil. Fairly simple, so if you've ever worked with clay or Play-Doh before in the past, it's very similar. You're gonna take a piece of that clay that you wedged and warmed up, work it into a sphere and then you're gonna make it an oblong shape like this. Again, make sure that it's free of cracks, it's not drying out. Add water to it, just a little bit of water. Don't wet it down too much or it'll get too muddy to work out. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to work from the center out and we're going to have our hands together in the center and then we're going to work our hands out like this as we are creating our coil, or rather our snake with the clay. If you happen to get a flat surface on your coil, just put it down and tap it out like that. I suggest that you don't make your coils too thin. I try to make them about the size of my pointer finger because then I know it's not too thick, I know it's not too thin, and it's gonna be a stable piece. Where the coil is thicker, I work from there and then work it out like so, until I have this nice, even coil. All right, after I've created several coils, you'll see that I have four coils now, I am gonna decide whether I'm going to make that flat base or if I'm going to make a base out of a coil. And I'll show you how to do that. So 
I'm going to take one of your coils. And this is where your fork will come in handy. You're going to mark one side of the coil with patches from your fork, creating this texture. And I go the opposite direction as well so I can get some cross hatches in the clay. This is called scoring the clay so that it sticks together. All right, so here are the cross hatches that I made in my coil. Notice they're not uniform, they're not perfect. They are simply for attaching the coil to itself once I create the base. All right, I'm gonna take some water, dip my fingers in it, and apply the water to the coil where I made those cross hatches. And then I'm going to literally roll it on itself and create kind of like a snail shell look. And that's gonna be the base of my coil pot. Notice I wiggle it so that it attaches really well. Smooth out any cracks that might be in that surface. All right, now we have two different options for the base of our piece. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is create slip. Slip is a mix of clay and water to create a muddy paste so that we can connect clay bodies together. All right, so what you're gonna need is your bowl, some of the clay that you peeled off of your base when you cut it out. You're gonna mix those together. You can use your fingers, you can use a spoon if you want. I prefer my fingers because I can really work the consistency of the slip out a little easier by mixing it in my fingertips. You're gonna want it to be the consistency of melted ice cream. It makes a really good paste. So this is what your slip should look like. It looks a little chunky. Um, it looks like melted ice cream, like I said before, and it's gonna work as, yeah, that paste or that adhesive to attach clay bodies together. It's messy and it's fun. Okay, we have our slip all mixed up. We have the base of our piece made and now we're going to build our piece. So take your coil and your fork and go ahead and score the top of your coil with those cross hatches. And then take some of your slip Smooth that out onto the surface where you just created that texture. This is going to be the very first coil we're going to attach. So we want the, the whole base to be really sturdy. We're going to take our fork and also cross hatch around that base with our scoring marks. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be pretty. 